All right, guys, before we get into the video, we're going to be doing a new giveaway for you guys. That giveaway is going to be the D&D Beyond Players Bundle, which includes not one, not two, not three, but four different books. Yes, in that bundle we have the Player's Handbook, the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, Xander's Guide to Everything, and Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. So we're going to have tons of character options in this bundle. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below on the video so you're entered to win a great giveaway coming from us very soon. All right, guys, on to the video. All right, guys, welcome back to Urge. Jameson, Alex here. We're going to be talking about the newest Unrest Arcana, the Gothic Lineages. So, so yeah, we read the comments. We, we know, do, we we know somebody else has been asking everyone, about this. Everyone's like, oh, cover the Gothic Lineages. Oh, what about these and that and this and that? Well, look, we're doing it. So, Ta da! We are getting to the point. Alex, okay. can you show so, receive? The way this works. There yes. are three, there are lineages, they're basically three. race race options, yes. but how it works is you basically pick a race, and pick then race. you pick a race. erase the race, erase and the you race. gain these abilities instead of the set. Pick the race, race, erase the race, gain the race. So the three Got options it. that you have are the Dampier, the Hexblood, and the Reborn. And basically what's going to happen is with the ability score increases, you're going to get, you know, plus two to one ability and plus one to a second ability. And it's basically what it's taking is like the custom races from Tasha's and just giving you further options with those. Pretty much. So you're going to get those and then languages, one common and one other language. Sure. And then some of these are going to have different creature types depending. So you might be like a goblin dampier. So you'd be like a vampire goblin basically. Or like hexblood is like a hag. So like a, or like a hag in hag themed. It's, 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 it's we'll haggish. We'll so and our thoughts on all that. But basically... With these, the first one, we'll just jump straight into it. I mean, why not? We're, we're here. The first one is the Dampier. So with this, you're, it's basically very heavily inspired by vampires and things of that nature. So uh, you can roll on a table. It gives uh, a D8 of your hungers, uh, like things that might like drive you, basically, uh, for sustenance. One of them is just gross. Cerebral spinal fluid? Ooh. That one seems like it'd be kind of hard that, to get that, to. That's dark. <laughs> it's like blood, flesh, meat, cerebral spinal fluid, Dreams. esoteric, esoteric humors. Like, what? <laughs> How would you even feed on that? Like, I don't know. I guess I, a color, <laughs> a color from one's appearance. So that okay. So I, I, Alex is not huge on this, but Adventure Time it makes me think of Marceline. She's a vampire, but she like instead of drinking blood, she drinks the color red. <laughs> so it says a color from one's appearance. Okay, so we Okay, I'm back. Anyways, so Dampier Origins. You're going to get another D8 on here. You know, reincarnation of a vampire tyrant. Yep. You know, predatory, deity, fiend, fae, whatever. So there's lots of different options here for the thematic origins to yep. your creature and to give you some inspiration on Which is cool. To base stuff. The flavor stuff. And then we actually get into the traits. So Indeed. Alex... Why don't you go over this part here? So, creature type, humanoid and undead, size medium or small, choose when you gain this lineage. So you can be like a little like vampire imp guy. Yeah, if you're like a halfling or something, yeah, you're yeah. going to be small. Yeah, or a goblin. Small. Yeah. Speed of 35 feet. So you yes. quick, quick little bugger, which that matters. Yeah. Dark vision, 60 feet, cool. Spider climb. Woo! Woo! Crazy. Climbing speed equal to your walking speed. In addition, at third level, you can be up and down and across vertical surfaces, upside down, Along ceilings while leaving your hands free. Shenanigans. Just walking on the ceilings like a, like a weirdie. And then, in case you didn't think it wasn't, well, it's kind of vampiric. Vampiric butt. There you go. So, you can add, this is a simple melee weapon with your, you know. Your teeth. Your teeth. Your teeth. <laughs> you can add your constitution modifier to the attack and damage, which is very interesting. Uh, your bite deals 1d4 piercing damage on a hit while you're missing half or more of your hit points the attack roll has advantage with the bite only just the bite just the bite when you use your bite hit a creature that isn't a construct or undead you can empower yourself with the following way so you can still bite the thing made of rock and damage it which is hilarious you just don't get the bonus thing <laughs> you regain hit points equal to the damage dealt by the bite which is not much but okay it's still health back or you can gain a bonus to the next ability check or attack roll. You make the bonus equals the damage dealt. So I'm thinking like you bite something first if you can hit it, and then you get like a plus seven to your next hit. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like boy. <laughs> so yeah, you are a vampire. I, I think the craziest thing about this is the the spider climb with the 35 foot movement. Yeah, that's pretty pretty crazy. Especially when you can just run up on the ceiling and you can still like attack. Like if you have a bow or something, you can attack. 
because your hands are free. Or if you're a caster, yeah. you know, you can... I, I'm, I'm thinking, like, a wizard gets out of trouble, climbs up the ceiling, is just standing on the ceiling as, like... Yeah, you big angry ogres can't hit me up here, can you? Yeah, right. Seriously. <laughs> that's, that's they throw a rock at you. <laughs> but yeah, they throw me a rock, and the rock yeah. doesn't hit as hard as that big club does. <laughs> Guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, bro. So, uh, definitely interesting on here, and I like the flavor of the abilities that you gain on here. From yes. The origins and yes. the hungers as well. Yeah, so they, can... they've definitely spent more effort through the years putting more into that, like actually yeah. in the book. So they just kind of were... Kind of letting you do all that. And you still can't. You don't have to take any of it. Right. Sometimes you just need that inspiration, though. Yes. You know? Because after he said, how do you feel in esoteric humor is now, I immediately want to be that person. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something good. Mmm, funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Indeed. Next one up on our list is the hex blood, And, I mean, we mentioned it being haggish. Next title block says, Heir of Hags. I mean, there you go. One way hags create more of their kind is through the creation of hex bloods. Every hex blood exhibits features suggested of the hag whose magic expires their, inspires their powers. This includes an unusual crown, often called an Elder Cross or a Witch's Turn. This living, garland-like part of the Hexblood's body extends from their temples and wraps between, behind the head, serving as a visible mark of the bargain between the hag and Hexblood, a debt owed or a change to come. Interesting. Intrigue. Yes, indeed. So on the origin side of things, it's they're very interesting suggestions. Fade kidnapper swapped you and your parent's child. That's really interesting. <laughs> There's not some movies based on that at all. Uh, yeah. You were cursed as a child to deal with the spirits of the forest, transforming you into a Hexblood, now free of the curse. Made a deal with the hag. They twisted your words and they transform you. Very interesting ways uh, to, to play around with and things uh, to flavor it out. Then we have the actual abilities. Your type, creature type, is fey and humanoid. Now, the thing that I want to mention as well on here, too, is, oh, yeah. is if it's to multiple creature types, it specifies having more than one type. Some creatures have more than one type in these. And if an effect works on at least one, it works on that creature. Yes. So if something is good against one thing but not against the other... Well, it works on this one thing, so you're going to get it. So it's maybe not the best to have two creature types. Um, probably more times than not, it's going to be detrimental. detrimental. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. Um, it is medium or small, again, because it's dependent on the original race that you choose. Right. Like if you choose like a halfling or a goblin or whatever, you're going to be small. Yep. Um, you have a speed of 30 feet, so standard, unless you are a small creature that gets that extra bump. Indeed. And then you have dark vision for 60 feet. Pretty normal on there. Fade resilience with advantage on saving throws. You make to avoid or end the charmed condition Both. on yourself. The ending part is unusual. It is I interesting. Like Gives a little extra on there. And then you have hex magic. You can cast disguise self and hex spells with this trait. Intelligence, wisdom, or charisma is your spellcasting ability for these spells. You choose one based on when you gain the lineage. Uh, once you cast either of these spells with a trait, you can't cast that spell again until you finish a long rest. Yep. You can also cast these spells using any spell slots you have. Which is interesting because if you're picking something that's a half caster and you want to get hex, for example, you got you're gonna it. get hex. You don't yep. have to dip in warlock mm -hmm. to get it. So something to keep in mind that's very interesting uh, if you're trying to get into that kind of stuff. And then lastly, we have the magical token. As an action, you can harmlessly pull out one of your nails, a tooth, or a lock of hair. I don't have many of those. Very, very, <laughs> very cute. Um, and this token is imbued with magic until the, you finish a long rest. So it's going to be a once a day kind of thing. While the token is imbued in this way, you can use an action to send a telepathic message to a creature holding or carrying the token as long as you are on the same plane of existence within 10 miles of it. Mm -hmm. The message can contain up to 25 words. In addition, while you're within 10 miles of the token, you can use an action to enter a trance for one minute during which you can see and hear through the token as if you were located where it is. While you're using your senses at the token's location, you're blinded and deafened in regards to your own surroundings. Afterward, the token is harmlessly destroyed. So it basically works as a pseudo-scry spell. Right. But you can also communicate through it as well. Yep. Um, and then it says, also, once you create a token using this feature, you can't do so again, so you finish a long rust, at which point your missing part regrows. So if you pull out a tooth, then just... <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so you don't just keep pulling out your teeth, like you're you becoming, you know, the, the gummy. <laughs> you can really... You can, the thing that's kind of funny with on this, too, is you could really scare some kids and stuff. You're just like... Ah. That makes me think of uh, Parks and Rec when Ron pulled out yes. his tooth. <laughs> it was like, oh, no, let's pull no. it out. What are you doing? Stop it. Stop it. 
Just pull up that tooth. Sometimes you have to prove to your coworkers that you could take immense pain. Yes. So you could do some fun stuff with that. Indeed. Or like scare some kids, just like pull out half of your hair and be like, yeah, you know. Yeah. But it grows back. So it does. Uh, definitely uh, interesting. I like this one's like very flavorful to me. And I think the being able to cast Hex is major, yeah. especially not having to dip into Warlock. Now, again, this is Unearthed Arcana, so whether it stays this way or not, we'll see. In the future. If it is, it'll they'll, they'll but, tweak something in it, I'm sure. Yes, but, maybe. Uh, but yeah, that is the Hex blood. Very interesting. So, definitely, yes. Very haggish. Hagen does. Hag Haggis. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, indeed. And then lastly, we have the Reborn. It says, death isn't always the end. The Reborn exemplified this, being individuals who have died, yet somehow still live. So, some interesting intrigue right off the bat with this one. Whoa. And it has a category here. It says, faded memories. Uh, reborn suffer from some manner of discontinuity, an interruption of their lives or physical state that their minds are ill-equipped to deal with. Mm -hmm. Memories of events before this interruption are often vague or absent. Occasionally, the most unexpected experiences might cause sensations or visions of the past to come rushing back. Rather than sleeping, Reborn regularly sit and dwell on the past, hoping for some revelation of what might come. And then it gives some ideas with lost memories, like recall a physically painful moment. What mark or scar on your body does it relate to? Or you recall a childhood memory. Memory brings you with it a voice of someone close to you. You could use this as a DM. I think very interestingly because you could yeah. have it tied in to the campaign where like maybe their past life is a major plot point in yeah. the campaign yeah. and you can get like clues and hints yeah. to what they're supposed to be doing through these visions and dreams and things that they have this is true. to this person. And actually, um, now that I think about it as I'm saying this, I'm pretty sure this is basically Molly Mock from Critical Role Campaign 2. So I'm just throwing that out there because he has like, he was, re he woke up in like the gray or whatever and yeah. he was reborn. So... Uh, I feel like they got some inspiration from there, so I'm just going to continue with this anyway. So some of you are like, yeah, Critical Role. Some of you are like, uh, boo, Critical Role. So beside the point, just made me think of that. It's so, an observation. Nothing yes. more. Okay. Um, and then it also gives you a table for origins. Uh, you're magically resurrected, by, but something went wrong. Uh, after clawing free from your grave, you realize you have no memories except for a single name. Okay, that's basically my mock right there. Um, so yeah, definitely some interesting things Dave. on here. Dave. Dang it, Dave. Dang it, Dave. <laughs> Or also it makes me think too of like the movie Memento. Have you seen that? So it's Jason that. Statham, and basically he forgets everything every day, but he like makes notes to himself. So it's Groundhog Day. So, yeah, I mean, but he makes notes <laughs> to himself to remember things. So yeah. So he's Got like it. trying to solve a crime, but he never knows. He starts over every day. Oh god. So it's kind of crazy. You can do some weird, crazy stuff with this if you're really creative. Indeed. So and your DM works with you, of course, because this is could be a major. Yeah. It could be a it, big it, hassle it, for a DM. Or it, it could, could be just be like a DM. small, fun little quirk if you play right. it that way, or if the DM really wants to commit to it. There's a lot of really interesting things you could do there. Yeah. Just make sure you talk to your DM and you're on the same page because it might be cool for you, but it might be way too much work for the DM. So keep. <laughs> Communication mind. is a key. Yes. So on the actual ability side of things, the traits you got, you are humanoid as well as construct or. Undead, depending on how you want to go when you choose this lineage, medium or small on your size, depending on how you know again choose when you're getting this lineage. Speed of 30 feet, 60 feet of dark vision, and then you have deathless nature, which is a whole list of things. Advantage on saving throws against disease and being poisoned, and resistance to poison damage. Advantage on death saving throws. You do not need to eat, drink, or breathe, so that's kind of fun. Uh, Water, you know, from here. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to sleep, and magic can't put you to sleep. Also fun. You can finish a long rest in four hours if you spend those hours in an inactive, motionless state during which you retain consciousness. Like, you just meditate kind of thing for it's, four hours. It's almost. basically just a mashup of, like, elf, warforged. Yep. You know, you're getting... So they're just taking abilities that kind of already exist and just being like, okay, what if you get this one and this yeah. one? You know, <laughs> this more this more pick. And then finally, you have knowledge from a past life. You temporarily remember sporadic glimpses of the past, perhaps faded memories from ages ago or a previous life. When you make an ability check that, you can use, that uses a skill, well, anything, <laughs> no you, check. you can roll a d6 and add the number roll to the check. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. You regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. So like, you can basically call them back on you know, your past life, past self to like avatar. So yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Roku. It's like We're making I, all the references, man. Yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, meta humor here. Uh, but so that that's interesting. It's just it's you know 
very small bardic inspiration for any skill check X number of times a day. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. That's very odd for a racial, but I like it. If flavor wise, it fits. Yeah, I don't know how balanced this is. I mean, you're just getting. I don't know. If it's a death saving throw, seems kind of like a big deal to just give to a, a, a starting right to a, to a race. Uh, I mean, elves get the sleeping thing, and the the warforge get to the, the, the eat, drink, thing. thing. Dwarves have the, the poison, the, the poison, poison resistance. Stuff. Yep. So. It's interesting. You're kind of getting a, a mashup. I think the original Warforged, I think they changed them, but I think Warforged had the poison resist as well. They may have to. Um, so that's Y'all going to let us know, because I know you will. Yeah. We're, we're not going to take the time to pause and look it up. We're just like, I, I think so. Uh, knowledge from past... Yeah, I don't know. The ability check... It's That's a lot of uses for a, a racial. Your proficiency bonus, mm-hmm. that's a lot. So I'd be surprised if that makes it through the uh, testing... Um, maybe you get like half your proficiency or like two uses or something. I don't know. Or one use per rest. Yeah. For sure. Usually sure. it's very rare that they do something that's more than once a day. Like yeah, for a racial. It, that's also, I think what makes the um, hex but interesting is you can use your own spell slots to cast the abilities. Because a lot of like, like the, uh, yeah, tea, like the alternate tiefling variants, they're like, it's a once a day ability, you know, that you just get to cast this like burning right. hands. Hellish rebuke. Yeah. Uh, so it's, I like the direction they're going with these. It gives you more customization and more mm. um, variance. But at mm. the same time, I don't think these are going to all make it through uh, as is. I mean, let, the, the, let's da- be, the Dampier may. Uh, let's be through. real, though. Variant human exists. So this you, is take true. That, you can take the feet at this level one. True. This is very true. Yeah, I mean. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> I, this, this should be. Very small very special weeks. Very it's, interesting. It's fine. But what, let us know, guys, down below what you think. Uh, if you think anything of this will stay as is, if they'll change it completely, what you think should be tweaked, shouldn't be tweaked. If you think it seems Is the fair, Reborn not an android? Because if it's not, like, what, what are we doing here? Um, you know, you could also do the Full Metal Alchemist thing on there, too. Oh, gosh. The, the pseudo armor, man. We could, we could <laughs> just leave the, leave the rest More, of the references alone. Like, right, add as many references as you can quickly. List them all. Okay. Uh, but anyways, that's more, more tags you can put at the bottom so, of the video. Yes, let us know uh, <laughs> all kinds of. Let us know some references that you can immediately like. Some right. of these things that they might make you think of, things like that. Uh, some of these things that you think need to be tweaked, that are broken, that are just fine as is. Let us know down or below. Other suggestions that can maybe be a different theme of some things like this right, that yeah, yeah. you would like to see. So yeah, always love reading through those comments, guys. Try to read all of them. I think it pretty much read through every single one of them. Um, so uh, always a fun time with there. Yeah. Very, very dipping topic, you know, new video. We yes. wanted to, we want you guys comment on this. We wanted to bring it to you. So, so here it is. So here, here's here's our take on the newest bit of Unearthed Arcana. It's interesting to see what gets tested, what gets changed, what gets rolled around, and what gets taken away, and yes. whatever, and so, whatever sees the light of day. Yes. So we'll probably comment on this again whenever it does officially get released, if it does. Most likely. But if you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications so you know when our new videos are coming out. So you're in that giveaway that's fresh. And as always, guys, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.